Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good afternoon in Malaysia is uh, afternoon now to everyone so I hope uh, in Pakistan is still morning or uh, reaching to afternoon and first of all uh, thank you for having me today and I'm very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this event will be successful and serve its purpose so for information, I am Dr. Siti Nurhayati Khairatun from University Putra, Malaysia. And my topic of the day is uh, on integrating vulnerability assessment in preventing food terrorism beyond the food safety regulation. So I will start with the overview of the food safety. The food industry is becoming more complex than what we have in the previous year, especially during the COVID and this is the post-COVID era. Uh, due to food cost commercializations, it's now more rapid with numerous new products entering the market, um, name, name, name it uh, for domestic market or international market. So globalizations play a very important role in the food supply chain which has opened doors to many risks and opportunity as well. So in many countries, public health is still the main concern in food processing and manufacturing. So basically the food safety regulations are in place and all enacted to, uh, to regulate the industry practices and also to safeguard the consumer right to get access for healthy and safe food. So if we look, um, my presentation will uh, look into the Malaysian context or Malaysian perspective. So in Malaysia, we do have uh, food safety regulations for both industri uh, food industry, which is uh, processing and manufacturing, as well as the food service uh, sector. Uh, so for today, I will um, only touch on the food um, industry, uh, food manufacturing industry only. So currently we have Food Act uh, 1983. So under the Food Act, uh, this is the Parent Act. So we have food regulations 1985. We have food hygiene regulations 2009. Uh, we also have food issuance to certificate of, for export of fish and fish product to Un uh, European Union regulation 2009 and also food irradiation regulation 2011. So this is the basic regulation. We are still um, having another regulations to regulate the food uh, terrorism, but it is still in the pipeline. So for food industry, actually food manufacturing industry in Malaysia, we do have several type of food certifications. For example, HACCP, I think most of us know what is HACCP. And then we have GMP, um, this is a good manufacturing practices. And then um, we have halal. We also have musti. Musti actually is short form of um, local language, which is in Bahasa Malaysia. But if I can translate in English, it's, uh, it means safe food is responsibility of industry. And normally this certification is um, focused on the micro and small businesses uh, because they cannot afford to pay the HACCP uh, GMP or GHP um, license uh, certification, for example, and the audit and everything. So MST is to um, help to facilitate, the, to facilitate the micro and small business in Malaysia. And also we have GHP, Good Hygiene Practice Certifications, and also we have BHM. BHM is actually Veterinary uh, Health Mark. So this is uh, for poultry and meat industry. So for all these um, certificate, uh, according to uh, as well as organic and authentic. So this all certification except BHM is under uh, Ministry of Health. But VHM uh, is under Department of Veterinary Services. It's uh, running by Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industry. It's um, one of the uh, Malaysian's uh, ministries. So this is uh, what I show here is only some of the logo uh, certifications that 
uh, that uh, the company or the food industry can use on the product or on their advertisement. So what is the objective of regulation? Basically, is to protect the public against the health hazard and fraud in the preparation, sales, or use of the food in any manner throughout um, the way to reach the consumer. So actually, what is food terrorism? Maybe some of us know and aware about food terrorism and how it could affect the food supply chain, a company reputation, reputations and brand image, to a country's economy and also to the public health, importantly. But based on my uh, preliminary studies on public awareness, uh, especially in Malaysia, on food terrorism, the result indicated that the level of awareness is still very low. Because um, the word food terrorism is quite um, technical, but when we mention sabotage, they do understand what is sabotage. But to what extent, they don't really understand. Okay. So in general, actually, um, the complexity of food supply chain and the food manufacturing have provided a great chance um, for intentional contaminations and tampering to happen along the way before the food product reach the consumers. So the key word here is the in intentional contamination. So uh, basically the food terrorism activities is regulated under other act um, uh, in Malaysia. We have Security Offences Special Measure Act 2012, but this act actually doesn't specify any terrorism activity against food supply or product. It's only for security and also for um, property. So uh, when we talk about food terrorism, because it's not regulated yet in Malaysia, uh, the food defense management system is uh, developed and designed to protect the food safety management system. Because uh, food safety management system is already exists, is already in place. So food defense management system actually is to protect the entire um, food safety management system from being contaminated by the culprit. So basically the culprit or the offender or the doer will be from the inside or the outside of the organizations for the company. So the attack to food supply may occur by chemicals, biologicals, physical, and radiological agents. So one of them, normally the culprit will just use um, the most effective one, the most um, uh, easily available uh, agents. So the, the objective of uh, terrorizing the food supply actually to cause harm and to uh, scare the public. So what are the, mot what are the motivations of the culprit to do this? Actually, uh, there's several um, behavior issue, for example, revenge, hatred, or dissatisfactions. Dissatisfactions of the, um, uh, the person towards the, normally to the top management of the company itself. So actually, food terrorism can be defined as um, attempts or acts to introduce harmful contaminants intentionally into the food products uh, that will cause monetary loss and damage to the company reputation or brand image. So that's uh, normally the core intention. Then, um, I would like to share with you several, there are actually a numbers of um, uh, food terrorism happen in, in the world, in many countries actually. But I just want to share with you only three incidents that happen in uh, Australia, for example, um, involve um, fresh strawberry supplies. This, is, uh, this happened in 2008, a strawberry farm uh, a story farm in Australia received 100 reports of needles found in a package of uh, fresh strawberry. So a total of 171 cases were filed all over Australia, uh, for example, in New South Wales, Queensland and Victoria. So um, they have uh, 
needles in the strawberry package and it was uh, it was uh, concluded that a supervisor from one uh, strawberry farm in north of Brisbane uh, was the culprit and she's being uh, charged in this case. Okay, in 2017, uh, South African dairy product of farm workers tinted the milk tank with uh, herbicide. So 20 liters um, of herbicide uh, added, was added to the 6,000 liters milk. So another co-worker detected the contaminations and stopped the delivery immediately. So in failure uh, to do so, about 2,000 people could be dead. And this incident has caused $1,000 loss to the farm. In, back in 2008, uh, a food imported from Japan had been subjected to contaminated uh, frozen gyoza manufactured in China. So in this case, the culprit has actually an employee of the Chinese gyoza manufacturer. He admitted to lace the product with pesticide because he was unhappy with her, his employer and not the Japanese uh, importer. So it just um, is happened in China, but the product being exported to uh, Japan. So it caused about 10 people being hospitalized for diarrhea. Okay, now we look at the comparison of component um, in uh, food safety management, food safety ma uh, management system. So a global food safety initiative has outlined the focus on food safety management system to include uh, four main, four main um, type of food. So the first category is food quality, food safety, food fraud, and food defense. So for today, I only focus on food defense. So if you can see food fraud and food defense is categorized under intentional alterations or tampering, but food quality and food safety are categorized in the accidental alterations. But this entire, uh, these four um, elements, four components of um, uh, alterations are uh, being part of food safety management system itself. You can see here the motivation is uh, harm, to do harm. Okay, food defense management system also addresses concern relating to security of the facilities or plan, safety of the personnel or the employee, access to vulnerable point in the operation line. So if you can compare with the food safety management system, they're slightly different, but the objective are still uh, to prevent um, or to mitigate the risk of being contaminated. So what are the current situations um, on food terrorism in Malaysia? So in Malaysia, actually, uh, any alleged terrorism activity, as I mentioned just now, is under security of offenses, Special Measure Act 2012. So, but actually, it doesn't specify any terrorist activity against food supply or food product. So in Malaysia, if we... So if we uh, um, there's no man since there's no mandatory requirement to implement food defense management system FDMS as part of the existing FSMS. So um, the industry, if they think this is necessary for them to have FDMS in place, they can do it voluntarily. But only required or the issue of certificate for export of food product to the USA. So um, if, you, if you are the Malaysian company, you intend to have your product being exported to the USA because in the US, they have a, a bioterrorism act, so which is cover also the, product, uh, the food product imported from other country. Other, uh, the exporting country must comply with the US law. Okay, so what is the status of COVID-19 and food terrorism? 
So uh, everyone aware, everyone is um, you know knows and aware that COVID nineteen pandemic has changed our routines drastically. So food safety management system also has. Is experiencing unprecedented situations due to the lockdown and new SOP of doing routines. So the industry are actually adapting to new uh, norm. So when the human resources were reduced in compliance of the SOP, applications of technology will very will be very useful in many ways to mitigate the possible risk. So those technology and digital tools who have been in place, but there is a need to have backup, technology backup as well. So if we can see that um, for, for food terrorism, for, to, mitigate, to mitigate the food terrorism or to reduce the risk, you have to um, uh, install technology in your um, uh, facilities or your plant. However, um, it depends on the um, uh, financial uh, status of the industry, I mean, it, of the company itself. So they can apply uh, cover framework. This is actually um, adapted from US Department of Agriculture from the uh, Food Safety Organizations Act 2011. Basically, covers, uh, this is the basic one. So they have the Carvers uh, Plus, but for the um, basic or for the industry or food industry, just um, begin to adopt the uh, or to install the uh, food defense management system in the facilities. So they can adapt the Carvers framework, which is include the criticality measures of public health. Um, and economy impacts of the attack, they have to um, list out, this is a kind of checklist actually. So and then they have to look at the accessibility, where the ability to physically access to the facility and to the food product, recuperability, the ability of the system to recover from the attack, what is your reactive action and how you um, handle the crisis. And then you have to look at the vulnerability uh, ease of accomplishing the attack, uh, either by the uh, insider or the outsider. Insider normally is the employee or the ex-employee who knows the um, layout or the operation line of the product. So outsiders normally is really outsiders uh, not known to the company, but they, they still have um, ill intention to harm the company reputation or cause uh, money loss, for example. So also you can look at the uh, effect where the amount of direct loss, direct loss uh, from an attack as measured by loss in production. So you also need to identify the recognizability where is the point of easy of identifying target in your facility. So this cover framework actually um, not really simple, but it's practical to adapt by a company who are post COVID during the post COVID nineteen. Okay, so as the conclusion, even though FDMS is not mandatory through regulation, I think in most countries now, uh, except for US and Europe, European Union, they have um, the food terrorism regulation for food manufacturing and processing are in place already. But for developed country and um, for developing country, most of us are still um, still maybe drafting or still like um, using this um, management system um, as voluntary on voluntary basis. So, but it's very important because this implementation is necessary to mitigate the possible risk. Because normally the terrorism happen, uh, you don't really see it when it's coming. And because it's, uh, it's planned, it's well planned, and it's um, highly, um, highly accessible by the, um, by the doer, by the culprit. Okay? And then you cannot detect in this in your uh, safety food safety management system. 
and then normally it's beyond that. And then to begin with, Malaysia is facilitating the issuance of health certificate, which is not dependent on end product testing. We are also committed to, um, to fulfill global food defense requirement by importing countries and to promote the acceptance both in Malaysia and overseas of food produced from food premises with certified food defense system. So actually, uh, we comply with those importing uh, countries like the US and the European Union. So um, for the food um, defense management system. So I think that's all for the presentation for me today. If you have any question or you want to share something with me, you are feel free to contact me at this email. Thank you.